Billy Buckets here with a in, with an improved, at least in my opinion, explanation of Simpson's paradox. So let's say we have two surgeons, Dr. Good and Dr. Slack. Dr. Good was trained at a very highly regarded institution and is now an expert at abdominal surgeries. Dr. Slack trained at a much more uh, low tier medical institution and he didn't pr apply himself very well through his training. He now practices at a much less prestigious institution also doing abdominal surgeries. In the last 100 surgeries, Dr. Good did 82 colon resections for cancer. 61 of those 82 surgeries was without any sort of complications. He also helped out in the emergency department and performed 18 appendix removals or appendectomies. 17 of those 18 were without any complications. Dr. Slack's last 100 surgeries consisted of 92 appendectomies, 82 of which were successful with no complications. He also was called upon to do or assist in eight colon resection surgeries, of which only four were without complications. Now, if you look at the percentages of those for each of the surgeons, Dr. Good had 74% success rate at colon resections compared to Dr. Slack's 50%. So Dr. Good is the better colon surgeon. Dr. Good also had 94% success rate at appendix removals whereas Dr. Slack only had 87. So Dr. Good is a better appendix surgeon as well. But if you look at the total number of, of surgeries successful of the last 100 for each surgeon, you can see that Dr. Good had a 78% success rate compared to Dr. Slack's 84%. Thus, Simpson's paradox is demonstrated. Dr. Slack has an overall higher success rate at surgeries, despite being a worse surgeon than Dr. Good in both appendix surgeries and in colon resection separately. The reason why you see this paradox is because you have two different surgeries that are being compared, colon and appendix removals, with very different levels of difficulty and complications. Dr. Slack comes out ahead of Dr. Good overall because he has far more appendix removals than colon removals. 92% of his surgeries were the easier version. Dr. Good, on the other hand, only had 18% of his last 100 surgeries uh, made up of the easier appendix removal and 82% the more difficult colon resections. So this is why we get Simpson's paradox. When you split uh, two categories into their appropriate groupings that have different, say in this case, levels of difficulty, you get the real answer. The real answer, of course, being that Dr. Good is a better surgeon overall. This can also be demonstrated with continuous variables, not just categorical ones. Take, for example, a group of students taking a math test. Some students chose to study more than other students, and if you were to look at the number of correct answers that they got on the test based on a survey that was given after the test at how much each student studied beforehand, you see that overall there is a slight negative trend. The more time each student studied, the worse their score is. The effect is slight, but it is visible. However, your eyes should be able to immediately tell you that there are two different clusters of dots here. One in this upper left corner, and the other, this longer, more spread out, uh, line in the right. If you were to consider where each of these students was coming from, you might find that one group of students was in the remedial math class. Their scores on average were going to start out much lower and they required more study time in order to improve, but their study time did pay off quite well. They had a more bang for their buck, if you will, by improving their score with more time spent in the books. The other group of students was the math team. The math team started out at a much higher level of performance and didn't get as much benefit from studying because they already had a lot of background information in math. So this is another case of Simpson's paradox where you can see that each subgroup individually showed a good improvement in score based on time spent studying. The more each group spent studying, the better the scores would be. But if you didn't make the distinction between math team and remedial math class students, you might reach the opposite conclusion, that study time is detrimental to math score. Thus is Simpson's paradox.